In this episode of the Stream Developer Swift UI series, you will learn about an animation that applies a spring-like force to a view's properties. Enter Spring Animations. In Swift UI, there are six different kinds of spring animations, and in this video, we will explore all the various kinds of spring animations and their parameters. After watching this video, you will understand the various kinds of spring animation parameters, such as mass, damping, damping fraction, stiffness, initial velocity, and blend duration, and how to apply them confidently without guessing their values. Hi, my name is Amos from Stream iOS Developer Relations. To get the best out of this tutorial, I encourage you to download the project from GitHub and explore all the various kinds of spring animations we use for this project. Let's go through the spring animation projects on GitHub. Here we have all the examples we used for this tutorial. It starts with the spring animation types and each type is illustrated with an example. All the spring animation parameters have also been explained. There are also several other examples and this is your reference for everything you need to know about spring animations in Swift UI. So you can refer to this repository from time to time to learn about the different types of spring animations and their parameters. Let's begin with our first project in Xcode. In the first project, we are going to turn this concentric circle to a chain spring you saw in the beginning of this video. That is this chain spring. So let's get started. The purpose of the first task is to show you how to add animation in Swift UI and how to create your first spring animation. Before we start creating the animation, let's rotate the circles using 3D rotation. We can do this using the 3D rotation modifier. So I'm going to add it here. The 3D rotation modifier takes all these parameters. The first one is the angle and the angle can be in degrees or in radians. Let's use degrees. Let's set the angle of rotation to 75. We want to rotate it on the X axis. So here I'm going to put one and set the Y axis to zero and the Z axis as well. You can now see we have rotated the first circle in 3D. So now I can copy the 3D rotation modifier here and paste it on all the remaining circles. To animate anything in Swift UI, we have to change it over time. And to do that, we need a state variable. So let's go to the declaration section. I'm going to define a state variable called moving and set its initial state to false. That will be used to animate the circles over time. After defining the initial state of the animation, the next thing we have to do is to define how we want this animation to be triggered. This ZStack parent container holds all the circles and where it ends, we are going to trigger the animation when all the views appear. To do this, we need to use the onAppear modifier. In the onAppear modifier, we will bring the animation object we just defined and toggle its state. Next, we will use the state to animate the property we want to animate. And that is the Y offset. Let's start with the first circle. After the rotation effect modifier, I'm going to add the offset. The offset has two parameters, X and Y, but in this case, we are just interested in the Y offset. I'm going to paste the state over here. We are going to use it to change the offset over time using ternary conditional operation. A ternary conditional operation has two values, true and false. So when the condition is true, we are going to set the Y offset to a certain value. And when the condition is false, we will set it to another value. So I will bring a question mark and the first value is the true value. Let's put 150 
and when the condition is false, we will set it to minus 180. Let's resume to see what we have done. You can now see the small circle has moved from its top position to this position. In order to see the animation, we are going to use the animation modifier. So soon after the offset, I'm going to add the animation modifier. It takes two parameters. The first one is the easing equation and the next one is the value. For the easing, we can use all the available easing equations in Swift UI. But for this, we are going to use an interpolating spring. The one that has stiffness and damping. I will explain what an interpolating spring is and all its parameters later in this video. For now, I just want to show you how to add animation in Swift UI. Let's put 100 for the stiffness. The damping value, we are going to use 5. The value parameter, we are going to use the state variable. So you can now see it animates with this bouncing effect. We want this animation to repeat forever. So after the easing equation, we will add the repeat forever modifier. We will select the first option and set the value auto reverses to true. And this will repeat the spring animation forever. Let's copy the offset and the animation modifiers and paste them on the remaining circles. You can now see both circles animate at the same time. To create the change effect, we have to delay one of the animations. So for the circle two, we are going to use a delay. After the repeat forever modifier, we will add a delay of 0 0.05. So you can now see for the second circle, the begin time has changed and that creates the change effect. Let's copy the offset as well as the animation modifier over here and paste it on all the remaining circles. And after that, all we need to do is to change the delay for each of the circles. We will use a delay interval of 0 0.5. So for the third circle, let's change the value to 0 0.1. Then for the next, we will change it to 0 0.15 and repeat this process for the rest. And this completes our chained spring animation using an interpolating spring and the delay modifier. Let's move on to the spring animation types. We will start with a default spring that is a basic spring in Swift UI. Over here, we use the same process to add animation that transitions the menu icon to a close icon. And this uses an explicit animation. The one we just created is an implicit animation because we attached the animation modifier to the individual views. So here we are going to add a basic spring. And to do that, we go to where we have the animation. We can pass the spring modifier as a parameter to with animation. So with this type of spring, we don't need to do anything because it has no parameter or no settings. The spring with no parameters applies a gentle and sensible spring feel to the object you want to animate. When I click the menu icon, you can see it transitions gently to the close icon and vice versa. Next, this is the same as the basic spring, but here we create a spring animation with a high stiffness and low response. And this makes the animation less snappy. We will dive into stiffness and response later in this video. And since this type of spring has a high stiffness and low response, you can see the transition becomes a little bit snappy. 
Now you know how to add spring animations that have no parameters. Let's move on to spring animations with parameters. In this example, we have chat reactions. If I preview, you can see there are only two animations. We are going to start with the background. Next, we will go to the heart icon, the thumbs up and the thumbs down icons by illustrating each one of them with different kinds of spring animation. So let's start with the background. We are going to animate the background using an interpolating spring. The interpolating spring allows you to create a spring animation that is based on stiffness and damping. The stiffness parameter is defined as the tensile strength or the tensile force of the spring. A higher value of stiffness will result in a snappier animation. Let's look at how that works. You can see over here, I have already defined this state variable, show reaction. And this animation is triggered when all the views appear. So you can see here, we have the state variable show reaction and its value is toggled. And using the state variable, we are now animating the scale of the background with ternary conditional operation, like we did before. We don't see any animation of the background. If I preview again, because we don't have any animation added. After the scale effect modifier, I'm going to add the animation modifier. For the easing equation, we are going to add an interpolating spring that has stiffness and damping. Let's begin by setting the parameters to zero. For the value parameter, we have to use the state variable show reaction. Once you add a spring animation that has parameters, you may not know where to start from. To get the default parameters for each spring, you can control click and then choose the option quick help. And that gives you default parameters for the spring. You can see here, this is an interpolating spring that has mass, stiffness, damping, and initial velocity. But in our case, we only have stiffness and damping. For this type of spring, it doesn't have any default values, so we can try our own values. Let's begin with a stiffness value of 170 and a damping value of 15. You can see the background animates as well. To increase the bounciness of the background, we can reduce the damping. For example, removing the one will make the background more bouncy. And to reduce the bounciness, we need to increase the damping. So let's change it back to 15. We can also use the stiffness to increase and reduce the bounciness of the animation. And this is opposite to the damping value. For example, if we remove the one and change it to 70, this animation becomes less bouncy. If we increase the value, for example, changing it to a value of 300, that will make it more bouncy. Next, we will move on to the heart icon. Here we are going to add an interpolating spring, the same spring we added before, but now it has additional parameters, mass and initial velocity. The heart icon also animates using two properties, offset and scale effect. So when the heart icon appears, we animate its offset from a value of two to zero and scale it from zero to one. Because the initial state of show reaction, you can see here is set to false. Let's add the animation modifier. And for the easing, we are going to use an interpolating spring. The one that has mass, stiffness, damping and initial velocity. This kind of spring animation also has some default values, but for now, let's use zero for each of the parameters. For the value parameter, we are going to use the state variable, show reaction. To get the default values, I will press control and click on the interpolating spring modifier and choose the option, show quick help. And that shows the default values. So you can see the mass is a double precision value of 1.0 and the stiffness, we can choose our own value, the same as the damping. 
and the initial velocity is by default set to zero. You have already seen what the stiffness is and what the damping value does. So let's move on to mass. So you can think of the mass as the weight of the object. It changes the inertia of the object attached to the spring. Inertia is the tendency of the object to move or to stop moving. So we can conceptually make an object behave as if it is heavier or it is lighter. If we make the mass heavy, the object takes longer to move and also it takes longer to speed it up and then it slows down. The default is one, so I'm going to change this to one. For the stiffness of this animation, let's use 170 and set the damping value to 10. We also want to delay the animation of the heart icon, so we can use the delay modifier. So over here, I'm going to add a delay of 0 0.05. Let's preview to see what we have done. So we can make the heart icon behave as if it is lighter by reducing the mass value to, for example, 0 0.2 or increasing the value to, for example, 2. And that makes the heart icon more bouncy. Let's change it to 1. Then move on to initial velocity. Initial velocity defines the speed at which the animation object changes at the beginning of the animation and the default value is zero. It is measured in units per second of the animation. To bring more depth to this animation, we can increase the initial velocity from zero to, for example, 50 and resume. You can now see the hat icon pops up more than before. If we change it to, for example, 100, and that becomes more intense. I'll change it back to 50 to make it a little bit sadder. Let's move on to the next, that is the thumbs up icon. For this animation, we are going to use a spring that has the parameters response, dampened fraction, and blend duration. You can see here the thumbs up icon has three properties being animated. The X offset, scale, and its rotation. So let's add the animation. For the value, we will use show reaction. And the animation type, we are going to use dot spring. This allows you to create a spring animation that is based on response, damping fraction, and blend duration. These are all the default values. The response is 0 0.55. Damping fraction is a double precision, which is 0 0.825, and blend duration is zero. Let's set all of them to zero at the moment. To get the default values, we will do it like previously. I will control click the spring modifier and choose the option show quick help. So you can see here, we have all the default values. Let's now set them to their defaults. We will also need to delay the animation of the thumbs up icon. So let's use a delay of 0 0.2. We can copy the delay modifier here. Then we change the value to 0 0.2. The response parameter controls how quickly an animating property will try and get to its target. You can use the response to create an indefinitely stiff spring by setting its value to zero. So this means that when we increase the value of the response to, for example, two, its animation becomes slower. You can see we slow down the animation of the thumbs up icon. So I'm going to change it back to the default. The damping fraction causes a gradual reduction in the spring's oscillation. By using the damping fraction, you can define how quickly oscillations decay from one bounce to the next. We can use the damping fraction to make the animation more springy by reducing its value. For example, dividing the value. That increases the bounciness of the thumbs up icon. I'm going to change it to tray, for example. 
and that bounces it more. So by reducing the damping fraction, we increase the bounciness of the animation. Let's move on to the last spring animation, that is an interactive spring. This allows you to create a spring animation based on response, damping fraction, and blend duration. These are the default values. You can see the response is 0 0.15. The damping fraction is 0 0.86. The blend duration, which has no visible change, is set to 0 0.25. You can use this spring as an alternative to the one we added before. That is the spring that has response, damping fraction, and blend duration. So this animates the thumbs down icon. And you can see we are animating the rotation effect and the scale effect. After the rotation effect modifier, let's add the animation modifier. Then we set each of the parameters to zero. For the value parameter, we are going to use show reactions. We can get the default values as I showed previously by control clicking the spring modifier and selecting the option show quick help. So we will set the response to 0 0.15, damping fraction to 0 0.86, blend duration to 0 0.25. We will also add the delay modifier. I can copy this one here and paste it right over here. Then we will change the value to 0 0.3. Let's begin modifying the values, starting with the damping fraction. The damping fraction is inversely proportional to the springiness of the animation. This means that if we increase the damping fraction, we reduce how the animation overshoots. So in this case, we are going to reduce it instead so that the animation can overshoot. Let's divide the value by three. Next, we can use the response to achieve the overshoot as well. The response parameter is directly proportional to how the animation overshoots. So if we increase the value, we are going to get more overshoot. And if we reduce it, we are going to reduce how the animation overshoots. Let's multiply the value by four. And that causes the thumbs down icon to overshoot more than before. And this is how the various types of spring animations and their parameters work in Swift UI. So in this tutorial, you learn about all the various kinds of spring animations available in Swift UI, as well as their parameters such as mass, stiffness, damping, damping fraction, response, and initial velocity. The project is hosted on GitHub, so I encourage you to download it and explore all the various examples of spring animations we used for this project. And thanks for watching.